On Wednesday the 4th of September, just last month, a 31-year-old father from Sioux Falls in South Dakota named Tyler Blake Weathersby left his home early in the morning heading out for what was supposed to be a short walk. However, Tyler mysteriously never returned, and despite extensive searches, he has not been seen since. In the days following his disappearance, Tyler's family noticed he had left behind both his wallet and phone. So concerned for his safety, they reported him missing to the Sioux Falls Police Department, who then coordinated searches in the nearby areas Tyler was known to frequent. Over the next few weeks, law enforcement exhausted over 100 different leads, as the public rallied together to help locate Tyler as quickly as possible. However, no substantial sightings would ever emerge, and by late September, police reported during a press conference that more leads were required. So determined to get to the bottom of this mystery, in the days following the announcement, Tyler's family and the local community continued to push for answers, with authorities urging anyone with information to step forward. And as a result of these efforts, an interesting theory would soon emerge, surrounding Tyler's very own wife, who was allegedly involved in the death of her ex-boyfriend in 2017. However, despite the exhaustive searches and community support over the past eight weeks, Tyler remains a missing person to this day, which has understandably left many to wonder. What really happened to Tyler Weathersby, and who could be responsible? Tyler Blake Weathersby was born in the year 1993 to his loving parents in the city of Chicago, alongside his brother Gregory, who he was particularly close with. While details of Tyler's early childhood are limited, his family and friends always described him as an incredibly active and positive individual who especially enjoyed spending time outdoors. According to his brother, he was also a very ambitious person, as from a young age, Tyler was able to demonstrate his talents for taking things apart and putting them back together, which was something that would later fuel the role he would play in Gregory's creative work. Growing up, the brothers would spend a lot of time together, fending for themselves on the busy streets of Chicago. But once they were old enough, they decided to move out west to LA to pursue dreams of starting a media company together, where Tyler would focus on the more creative tasks like producing music and videos, whilst Gregory would be more responsible for the business side of things. However, despite the rising success that Tyler was experiencing, his life wasn't perfect as unfortunately he would suffer a number of setbacks that would inevitably cause him to have to return home to the Midwest, where he would eventually settle in the city of Sioux Falls in South Dakota. But soon after arriving, Tyler quickly began to assimilate himself into the local community, and even developed a reputation for being dedicated and driven as he worked locally, and had a steady routine that kept him connected to the rest of the city. But it wasn't just his career choices that demonstrated his hard-working nature, as at some point during his late 20s, Tyler would meet a woman named Mona Lisa Perez, who would go on to become an extremely important figure in his life, as the pair would eventually marry and bring a child into the world. However, just as the parents were beginning to prepare for their baby's first birthday, an event would take place that would rock the entire community of Sioux Falls when Tyler would mysteriously disappear on that fateful day in September. On Wednesday the 4th of September, the 31-year-old man left his home in Sioux Falls in the early hours of the morning, telling his family he was just heading out for a quick walk. At first, it just seemed like any other day, and there were no indications that Tyler had any unusual plans. However, as the day wore on, Tyler didn't return home, and his family grew increasingly concerned knowing it was unlike him to disappear without notifying somebody first. But the situation would only get worse when the next day, Tyler's family discovered that he had left his phone and wallet at home, which understandably deepened their worries about his safety. Searches were quickly organised by the family, who began combing through the areas he was known to frequent, but despite their efforts, no traces of Tyler were initially found. Local witnesses offered limited information, with a few unconfirmed reports of somebody matching Tyler's description seen in the area, although during these conversations nothing definitive ever emerged. So, with his family now fearing the worst, they decided that they had no other option but to file an official missing persons report with the local police, hoping that it wouldn't be too long until he would be found.
On Thursday the 5th of September, the Sioux Falls Police Department received a call from Tyler's family, who had become increasingly alarmed after not hearing from him for over 24 hours. They then went on to inform the police about how Tyler had left his house early the previous morning for what was supposed to be just a short walk, and how he hadn't returned or even reached out ever since. But to make matters even more troubling, his family were also extremely concerned given the fact that he had left both his wallet and cell phone behind, which was not only uncharacteristic of him, but also something which could have potentially been quite dangerous, with Tyler possessing no immediate method of contacting his family if required. So in response to their pleas for help, the Sioux Falls Police opened an official investigation into his sudden disappearance deciding to start by interviewing family, friends, and neighbours to establish his recent routines and any potential signs of distress. They also went on to review local surveillance footage with the aim of trying to track his last known movements after leaving the house that day. However, at first, they were unfortunately unable to find anything substantial to help with the case, other than an eerie video clip from a neighbor's doorbell camera, which showed Tyler walking along the street shortly after leaving the home. So, given the lack of concrete information on what happened to Tyler after he disappeared, the police then expanded their search efforts, deploying drones and ground teams to cover the areas Tyler was known to frequent. The investigation also saw collaboration with volunteers and private search teams which were organised by Tyler's family and friends, who at the time remained hopeful for his safe return. However, after countless days of searching, there were still no physical signs of Tyler, or any further leads that would allude to his whereabouts. So with public interest growing around the case, the Sioux Falls Police then decided to hold a press conference, urging anyone with information to come forward, and almost immediately hundreds of tips began to flood in, giving the police hope that this would be the big break they needed in the case. But despite their hard work and unwavering optimism, the police would soon be devastated to find out that every single tip would lead to a dead end leaving Tyler's family distraught as they were only left to wonder what could have happened to their loved one. So with time running out and public pressure rising, the police were left with no other option but to start thinking outside the box, and in a surprising twist of fate, it would be during this period in particular that some very interesting theories would be raised about who could be responsible. On Wednesday the 11th of September, exactly one week after Tyler's disappearance, the Sioux Falls Police Department held another press conference to update the public, as the pressure had been mounting with each passing day. During their speech, the police revealed that Tyler's phone and wallet were left at his home, and his family expressed concern, explaining that it was entirely unlike Tyler not to check in or at least keep in touch. The family emphasised that Tyler was a dependable person and his sudden disappearance was profoundly out of his character. Authorities then went on to address various different theories at the press conference with the idea that this may have helped spark some further leads from the public. While initially considering the possibility that Tyler might have left on his own accord, they confirmed that they were keeping all options open, including potential foul play. However, they also admitted that at the time there were no signs of evidence pointing definitively in any direction, making it necessary to continue exploring all possibilities going forward. During the conference, Tyler's family strongly refuted the idea that he may have been in distress, describing him as a positive and stable person before his disappearance. So in response to these updates, the wider community came together with Tyler's family and friends to help aid in his safe return, whilst the police continued to conduct their investigation, with some members of the public expressing their interest in Tyler's wife as a potential suspect, given her sketchy romantic past which involved the accidental shooting of her ex-boyfriend in 2017. However, despite numerous leads and countless searches of the local area, to this day the mystery surrounding Tyler's disappearance remains unsolved, with only speculation remaining about what could have happened to the young father. Now unfortunately, as far as the official investigation goes, this is all we know for now. 
but despite these difficult circumstances, Tyler's family are refusing to give up hope, as after all, there is still every chance that he could return home any day now. And with the media attention rising with each day, they believe it will only be a matter of time before he is found safe and alive. However, given that Tyler has now been missing for almost two months, alongside the incredibly concerning details that surround his case, I can't help but feel that the likelihood of his safe return is only growing weaker as time passes. So with that, let's get into some of the potential theories. Now, just before we dive into the theories themselves, as always, I first wanted to acknowledge Tyler's family, who are no doubt experiencing some immense feelings of grief in this difficult time. So, given the sensitive nature of this situation, I feel it's important to remind you that we have to approach any potential explanations behind his disappearance with the utmost respect and understanding. As with all of my previous videos, the theories I'm about to delve into have been shared by his family, law enforcement, or media sources, but given the many unknowns surrounding Tyler's disappearance, for now, these theories remain nothing more than speculation as so far no concrete evidence has emerged that points definitively to any particular scenario. But with that being said, one theory that is being heavily considered by the local community is that Tyler may have been involved in an accident during his walk, potentially near a remote or secluded area, which would explain why he left his phone behind and why he has not been found. After all, if he was only supposed to be going for a walk and he was familiar with the area, he might not have had any need for a cell phone. However, this theory fails to explain how he could have gotten lost on his own accord if he did know the area well, so it would be highly unlikely that he would not be able to find his way home after the walk. Another theory that has been spoken about revolves around Tyler's mental health, as concerns were raised that he may have experienced a personal crisis in the days before his disappearance, which could have led him to spontaneously run away or even become disoriented during the walk. However, Tyler's family has expressed strong doubts about this theory, stating that it doesn't align with his usual behaviour or values to suddenly just go silent. They acknowledge that everyone faces personal struggles, but Tyler's family believe that if he was struggling at the time, he would have surely asked for some support or at least shared any plans with his family. There were also no signs of an accident near the areas Tyler would frequent, which allows for the possibility that he wandered off during a moment of distress. But given the fact that Tyler left many personal belongings behind, this situation doesn't appear to have been a long-term planned departure which raises further questions about what might have happened. But before I get too carried away, we have to keep in mind that until further evidence comes to light that proves nobody else was involved with Tyler's disappearance, we unfortunately need to keep an open mind that it is still very possible that somebody else could be responsible. Now, as I mentioned earlier, there is no concrete evidence to explicitly confirm any of these theories. However, there are many people coming forward who speculate that foul play is the most likely explanation, given the lack of information that has been shared by the police and the absence of any real clues. Also, law enforcement have stated during a press conference that although they are still treating this as a missing persons case, they have not ruled out the possibility of foul play if new information arises. So with this in mind, the local community as well as Tyler's family continue to hold on to hope that someone might come forward with relevant evidence that can help shine a light on what really happened that day. But taking a small step back, I feel it's important to mention that there has been some curiosity surrounding the background of Tyler's very own wife due to a fatal accident involving her former boyfriend and after it was revealed that just days before Tyler went missing, she allegedly inquired about his life insurance policies. Back in 2017, Mona Lisa Perez, who was just 20 years old at the time, tragically took the life of her former boyfriend, Pedro Ruiz III, who was also the father of her two children. During a YouTube stunt, Pedro held a thick book close to his chest, believing it would be capable of stopping a bullet. But as you can probably imagine, this would turn out to be a grave mistake, as the bullet would pierce through the book and fatally wounded him. The incident was captured on camera, and Mona Lisa later pleaded guilty to second-degree manslaughter, 
before she was sentenced to 180 days in jail, with a plea agreement that prohibited her from profiting off the video and barred her from owning firearms for life. So with this story in mind, it cannot be ignored that if Tyler is found to be deceased, Mona Lisa Perez will therefore be connected to multiple spousal deaths, which is certainly something worth looking into, especially given her alleged inquiry into Tyler's life insurance policies. However, it must be said that no substantial links to Tyler's case have been found so far, and reports indicate that the incident involving her ex-boyfriend was nothing more than an accident. But nonetheless, determined to uncover the truth, the Weathersby family have since hired a private investigation agency to further explore every possible lead. But at least for now, there is still no definitive theory that has come to light, meaning Tyler's family can only continue to advocate for public support with the hopes that they can bring their loved one home, or at the very least, find the answers that they so desperately deserve. Anyway, on that note, I think I'll leave this video here. But as always, if you have any other theories of your own which you think may help explain what really happened to Tyler Blake Weathersby, please leave your ideas in the comments down below and I'll do my best to get back to you. But until next time, thank you so much for watching, and if you found this video interesting, make sure to subscribe to the channel, and feel free to check out the playlist on screen now, which features a number of similar cases that also involve young people of colour in recent years.